chorus, just listen, I'll sing it to you. I belong to Glasgow, dear old Glasgow town. Moving on, they're going to Scotland next in October the 1st. Tickets on sale now, ticketmaster.co.uk. Come and join us at the Hydro, the SSE Hydro. Fantastic card. ACB, absolute championship pair called Bristol Bay Black Sports for the Piatti. Get in the Barca! What time is it? Hello and welcome to the Martial Arts Chat Podcast. I'm your host, John Boy McElroy, and on this episode, we'll be covering the Absolute Championship Bear Cook 47 event at the SSE Hydro in Glasgow, scheduled for the 1st of October. We'll be speaking to all the big fighters on that card, as well as getting reaction and build-up from our expert panel later in the show. So first up on our series of chats, I'm pleased to say we are joined at this time by former UFC fighter, none other than Stormin' Norman Park. How's it going? You alright mate? Nice to, nice to be here. ACB is uh, it's just around the corner now and uh, first the most obvious question to you sir is how's training been with weight cutting? How are you feeling going into your uh, 28th professional fight? I'm feeling good. Um, obviously it's a different, um, I'm looking at it from a different perspective from you know, I'm not in UFC no more. It's a, it's like a, a new chapter. So um, um, I'm focused. I'm dialed in. I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to getting in there and uh, you know, just getting in there and feeling feeling the new the new arena. You know, the the new home. You know, so it's um it's going to be a great experience. I'm looking forward to the whole uh, seeing what way the ACB got this uh, show set up here in the UK. It's, I know it's their first show here in uh, in the mainland so yeah. I'm looking forward I'm looking forward to getting in there and, and, and putting on a good show and like we sort of alluded to there your last fight of course was a, a decision loss against the uh, steam cabal off at UFC fight night back in uh, February um, if I can ask you so just to cast your mind back to that have you had a chance to watch that fight back and and if so benefit hindsight anything you would have done different Norman um yeah I did, I did watch it back um I think um I respect you know it was part of my training as well. I, w- I wish I had a, you know, there was a mis- mistake on my behalf. I wish I had a went to America and trained with the elite wrestlers, you know, because mm-hmm. um, chatting to him after the fight, he was, you know, he went back to his roots in wrestling and yeah. he was training with, what, Olympic, 12 Olympic wrestlers every day. So wow. I never had that. Uh, I felt that my takedown defense was enough that I could stifle his game. But no, nah, his, his wrestling control was good and, you know, he get the first round, I get the second round, and it was the third round was it was all to, it was all to play for, you know. And yeah. I had his back. There were certain moments in the fight where it was it was leaning towards me, and and then once he once we halfway through the round, he made that exchange and got my, the body lock and controlled me from there on in. It was that was um, that kind of you know uh, put me off a wee bit, you know. But then I thought, you know, I never put the proper training in for for him, so respect to him he get the job done but i watched the fight back a few times you know i felt it did pretty well not much happened in the fight but you're going to expect that when you get two you know i knew you wanted to wrestle me the whole time so i was trying i was just worrying about the takedown the whole time I mean, you yeah. can never really let the striking go as much but once once i had him on the back foot there in the second round he was uncomfortable if i like if i could have kept that going in the third round as opposed to going for the takedown you never know maybe i could uh um uh, the win but I definitely took a lot from that fight. There's no doubt about it. I faced the, t- the toughest, um, the toughest lightweights there. You know, my last few fights were mm. real tough, strong boys. So I, I gained a lot of experience from that. And I, after uh, that fight, I mean, we were all quite shocked, as in the press, myself included, that you were released from the UFC. Um, how disappointing was that news for you, sir? And, and does that motivate you in your career going forward? I, the, the way I'm looking at it now, you know, I feel like it's for the better. Obviously, at the moment in time, you're like, oh, shit, serious, man. And then you're fucking, you're thinking, oh, shit, where do I go from here? So yeah. it's like this game, the highest of the highs you are, you know, when you win or whatever, like the good moments, it's the best feeling ever. And when, you know, when you lose, it's the worst feeling ever. So yeah. there's there's no there's no happy medium uh, in this game. It's, uh, it's either you're up on top or else you're at the lowest point ever. So that's what it felt for, you know, what, about a month or so after. Mm-hmm. You kind of question yourself and stuff like that, but no, I would question myself if I was getting in there and people were, you know, taking me down and submitting me straight away or, or knocking me out. You know, I've never been knocked out. You know, I was never submitted at the highest level of competition. So 
I feel I feel like if I make a few tweaks in my game and just be a wee bit more aggressive, uh, I, I could be back there. That's what I feel, and I'm going to just stick by that. And if not, you know, there's plenty more routes that I could go. So we'll see what happens. And so, uh, so moving forward with this contest, the ACB 47 and two your opponent. One Andrew Fisher, uh, he's an experienced fighter, sir. He's he's got noble wins over the likes of Shea Walsh and Gavin Sterrett. How do you rate Fisher's game, and, and what do you expect from uh, from the Sunderland fighter? Yes, uh, I know Andrew pretty well. He's a he's a tough test for anybody. I know he's naturally a featherweight, but recently he's moved up to lightweight. His last few fights, I believe, they've been that lightweight. So he's a uh, he's back up to lightweight. Um, he's had you know some some tough fights in Bellator. You know, I actually cornered him one of his fights in Bellator mm-hmm. and. Uh, to make La California when I was there training in San Diego. So, um, you know, I, I, I know the lad. Um, and I watched his game. He's, he's pretty decent everywhere. Um, you know, he's got experience. He's fought some strong... But he fought Abdul Muhammad, who's a strong wrestler. So he's been in there with some good strong boys and, and stuck it out. So um, it's going to be a tough test, but I feel like I've got the ability to get the job done. Any mixed emotions? I know you mentioned that you cornered him uh, out in the states and things like that. Does any of that factor or, or play a part um, when you uh, when you come to face him in cage? Head? No, not whatsoever. You know, I'll you know there ain't going to be any smack talk or anything like that. He's a <laughs> he's a nice lad. You know, um, yeah. I'll shake his hand before the fight. I will win there and we'll we'll put on a good fight. And then after it, we'll we'll shake hands after. But obviously, I'm going to there to get the win. Yeah. Likewise, he is. Yeah. You know, it's um, it's just just has to be done. You know, so. May the best man win. Fair play to you, sir. After Fisher, if you get that W, where do you see yourself going next? Is it a, is it a multi-fight deal you have with ACP? Or, or maybe is it back in the States and, uh, with this, a major promotion? What's the plan going forward, sir? Um, that This here, um, this is just a one-fight deal um, at the moment. So I'm not too sure whatever happens after this here, we can we can see, you know, I get the job done then. I would, I, I, you know, ACB have got a lot of great fighters on the roster. You know, I've been, I watched the show last week there, and uh, the fights were unbelievable. The stream was good, mm-hmm. and uh, I know they want you to go to Russia to fight them top stars. You know, I, I wouldn't mind that at all because I believe, I believe I get the skills, and you know, to to go in there against the lightweight. So we'll see what happens there. But actually, I've got a fight lined up on uh, 28th October, and uh, Drocker, I'm fighting Dickie Dalton on Cage Legacy. It's their first show so that's my my next fight after that it's already lined up and um so we'll see what happens after that one i'm not too sure i, I hope to try and get four fights by the end of the year that's that's what i'm looking at keeping busy sir and uh, and, and good for you it keeps you fresh in the mind and, and fresh in the body um norman it's been a pleasure to have your time here on the martial art chat podcast we're all excited to see you fight in, in glasgow's hydro and i hope it's uh, an enjoyable experience for you in our beautiful city one last question before i let you go sir um, as we mentioned, you'll be fighting in front of a thousand of screaming Scots, and of course, a lot of your fans as well. Have you got a message for your fans and for Glasgow's fans uh, come the first of October, sir? There's a there's a whole terror in Northern Irish living in Dundee, so they bought a whole <laughs> load of tickets off me, and um, so I appreciate them for all the support. And obviously, the Scottish, you know, we're connected in some shape, form, or fashion. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at the history, so I, I believe that they're going to support me more than they're going to support the English lads. So yeah. They're 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 going to be well hyped up. I know I know they like a good competition and a good scrap. So um, I'm going to put on a show for them 100. I believe I'm going to go in and get the job done quick. Excellent, sir. Storm and Norman Park. Thank you very much for your time and best of luck uh, come ACB 47. Thank you, sir. Cheers. Thank you to Norman for his time on the show and best of luck to him come fight night. Ed the King Arthur is a bantamweight warrior and always brings exciting fights, win, lose or draw. He's making his second outing in the ACB promotion and finally getting to throw down with Brent Crawley. We caught up with the King and talked tough fights, competing in Russia and making examples. To say the King is back on the show today, I'm speaking of course of Ed King Arthur and Ed, how are you on this fine morning? I'm good, thank you, man. Like you said, the king is back. Great to have you on, as always, sir. And I have to say, a lot of your fans here in Scotland, really excited that we get to see you live in Glasgow. This man's never in a boring fight, folks, and I'm sure the fans up here will love it. But let's just cast our minds back to July then, Ned. Um, we saw you make your uh, ACB debut against uh, a tough Russian in Peter Yang. And uh, despite coming off that decision loss, sir, uh, as we sort of alluded to there, you show great determination and skill, as always. And it's something mm. um, we're really coming to expect from you now. Um, have you had a chance to watch that one back, sir? And, and if so, what were your thoughts? Yeah, it was definitely a great fight. Um, first experience over there at ACB Russia was great. They treated me like a king. 
Um, I thought it was going to be a lot more hostile than it was, but it was great. Um, watching the fight back, I was uh, happy with a lot of areas and also disappointed with a few areas. I felt like I uh, played the game a little bit too much instead of getting vicious. And yeah. that's one thing that I took from that fight, that Peter Yan was coming at me vicious right from the start. And I found it motivating. You want to be a fighter, you've got that vicious hunger in your belly to uh, take out whoever's in front of you. And that's definitely what he was doing. And I wasn't doing that quite like I normally do. So you can expect fireworks on the next fight because I've learned from that one. And coming back with a vengeance is definitely planning what I'm doing. Fantastic. So out in Russia on your travels there, did that play a part or, or factor into anything in regards to the result? Or is uh, as a cage fight in Russia really just the, the same as here in the UK or anywhere? Uh, no, the travelling was fine. To be honest, it was a good, fun experience. It kept me in the, in the right mind frame. I didn't have time to sort of sit around and think about the fight. I was travelling around, seeing things, having a laugh. It was it was good. It kept me focused on what I was doing. And um, to say the main part of the fight was the strength. He was just a lot stronger than me. And um, a few technical areas, don't get me wrong, he was the better fighter. But the strength, I think, played the biggest factor in that. So that's definitely something I've been working on since then. Fair play to you, sir. Well, we're uh, we're delighted you're back in Blighty, and as we've said many times on this show, you have a lot of fans here in Scotland who love that style of yours. Um, they may call you the wee man instead of the king, but um, just <laughs> how, how excited are you for fighting in front of uh, thousands of screaming Scots at the Hydro? Mate, I can't wait. It's going to be a crazy experience. I uh, I was something I keep saying to myself, and I say to a lot of people: is real fighters put on real fight. Yeah. So that's what I want to turn up, put a real fight on. You know, there's a there's a lot of big names on that card, but. We'll, we'll see what happens once the show's done. We'll see which fight they enjoy the most because I know when I turn up, they're not going to be disappointed. A real fight's coming. 100%. Uh, last time we had you on the show, it was prior to uh, Bama 25 and um, in the build-up to that fight. I think it was um, it was the most intense and focused we've ever seen you. I'd, I distinctly remember that sit-down you had with um, with Brian Lacey. Uh, it seemed like you just had nothing on your mind but a W. Uh, like you were, you were visualising it and, and of course it came true. Uh, do you think that was the most you were ever focused in the lead-up to a fight, sir? Yeah, there was, a, there was a lot on the line, but it wasn't people say to me like grudge match I heard the words grudge match a lot uh-huh. it wasn't it wasn't like that for me I was I was motivated by the fact that I was coming off the loss to Shea I had talks about big things getting lined up with ACB and other you know other opportunities of other promotions and stuff like that I wasn't about to go two losses in a row I was about to finish yeah. the man quick and make an example that he wasn't on my level and that I was on I'm on the high level with real fighters so it wasn't I wasn't motiva- motivated at all by any sort of grudge match. It was just simply motivated by, I'm not going to in a row. I'm going to still show people that I'm on this level. So that's what I was motivated by. It certainly was uh, intense. And, and like we mentioned, you got a victory over another tough opponent in, in Cameron Else. Uh, I don't I don't want to insult you by the next question, sir. Um, but I feel I have to ask. Every time we hear an opponent announce for you, you know, it's Ed Arthur versus... It's always a killer. It never seems like it's an easy fight. Like you said there, Shea Walsh. Uh, Nathaniel Woods was undefeated at that time, of course, when you fought him. Um, you never take easy fights. This fight's no exception with Brent. Um, he's a tough fighter from Derby. Two knockouts in a low in his last two. What do you make yep. of the Nottingham fighter? What threats do you think he possesses? Yeah, like, like you're saying at the start there, I want to take on real fights. I hear a lot of people in this country talking about, <clears throat> about wanting to get to the UFC and change their lives and become UFC champion and stuff like that but then when they're in this country they take an easy fight try to go 10 and 0 12 and 0 whatever it is against you know easy walk in the park guys yeah. and one thing I learned from Russia is when you're taking on these high level fighters like in Russia they've got a different type of hunger in their belly they come from a harder type of life mm-hmm. you know what I mean you're going to be fighting guys in the UFC that are from Russia from the favelas in Brazil places like that you're going to beat them by just have an e- you know e- an easy route and then get there and you're gonna have a shock of your life. Yeah. So my theory is, have real fights now, win them fights. <clears throat> when I get to the UFC, I can actually change my life, not just have one or two fights, get my ass kicked and get sent home packing. So Brent Crawley, supposed to fight him before, the fight um, had to unfortunately had to be postponed, and we got the opportunity to go back at it again. I do respect him a lot for taking that fight. I know there's a lot of people that wouldn't take a fight with me on, on short notice. Mm-hmm. This is the second time he's done it now because he was short notice last time when he took the fight. Um, but if I'm honest, I'm going to come there and I'm going to make an example of him. I can't, I can't risk my <laughs> my career getting slowed down by you know three losses out of four fights. You know what I mean? Like yeah. these two losses that have happened in the last three fights, they're big names, big fights, and look look what I've done with them fights. They've been finished. They've been.